What I want to start with is just the very basic concepts. What is vortex-based mathematics? What, what is it saying? What are its applications? Well, first of all, vortex-based mathematics, Marco, his original claim was that he had tapped into and could model mathematically a previously unobserved um, invisible energy. Okay, that energy is referred to by many names and has been by many people. Um, it's been called tachyons or monopoles. You might call it gravitons. Uh, you might call it radiant energy, chi, prana. Um, you might just call it energy or E, like as in E equals mc squared. It is the motive driving force behind all of reality. It is the initial impulse, positive force behind creation. Okay. This energy is characterized by its linearity. In other words, it moves in a straight line. Uh, every bit of mass, Einstein's relativity will tell us, everything with even a slight bit of mass, even a photon, okay, which is supposed to have no mass, but even a photon coming from a distant star was seen to curve around the sun, okay, proving that relativity existed. So this shows that all mass, all matter, is in a curved motion, a relative motion. This energy is different from that. It, is, um, it penetrates everything, nothing can resist it, and it leaves a grain on everything. It is undecaying and eternal, okay? And it is the control and standard upon which all of creation is based. So that is what I want to describe. Here is, uh, in this symbol before you, those of you who are familiar with the math have seen this. Um, Marco refers to it as the symbol of enlightenment. It is a mathematical decryption of what's known as the most great name of God and the Baha'i faith. I came to this work initially because of my lifelong search for the understanding of how to intonate the most great name of God. But without going into religious mysticism, I'm simply trying to point out that these numbers and everything that I'm going to show, even what this energy really is and does, the closest thing that you can get to it is sound. What this is is a model for sound, for resonance, for harmonics. Numbers are harmonics. They're musical. Okay? They are polarized. They create color. They create all the effects that we see. Okay? And these are just simple whole numbers. I'm not talking about any kind of esoteric or complex numbers. Okay, so around this circle, we see all the numbers we are familiar with. We start here with one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right? So those are all the single digit numbers known. I don't know of anyone who's ever, in any of talk I've ever done, suggested another single digit number that exists. Any other number is going to at least create double digits, triple digits. And what we're showing here is that if you add those numbers back together, which is a common practice in numerology and computer science, it's called finding the digital root. Okay? What it does is it reveals an underlying pattern underneath any bigger number that you can find or any infinite series. Everything has an underlying pattern to it, and these single digit numbers will give you the underlying pattern. And what we're looking for in nature is patterns. When we want to model fractals, self similar forms, all of this is based on patterns. And this is a way you can create all these patterns and you can model a higher dimensional energy, okay, and show how it's creating those patterns. So these are our simple numbers. 1 through 9. We're going in a clockwise and right-handed direction around the circle. Okay? So let's just, what we're saying here with this symbol is that 
With it, you can do all the functions of math, which is addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. There's no other known functions of math. All of those functions of math can be done instantaneously, simultaneously, and they can be shown to be revealed in one single map, which can do every function of math, which can model every principle of physics, uh, which can model chemistry, the periodic table, which can model genetics, biology, that you can do every function of math as one. So I wanted to show you how those work and how they relate to this symbol and then what this symbol ultimately produces, which is the real goal of the work. Okay. So let's start here with one. It's a really easy number. Oftentimes they say one is the loneliest number, or we might think of one God, one universe. It is a cohesive number, a unity. Okay? So we start with one. What is one doing on this symbol? Well, if we draw a straight line connecting it to the next number, it goes to two. And what that is is called doubling. Okay? One doubled becomes two. Okay. Two, if it doubles and we follow this line again, becomes four. Four, if we double, again following our line, becomes eight. Eight doubled then is sixteen. But the, here I have a seven. How come is that? Because if we add six and one together, we get seven. And again, we're looking for underlying the pattern, underlying the, the big numbers, the sequences of numbers, we have patterns of single digit numbers. So when we get to 16, 6 and 1 is 7. So that's my next number. 16 double is 32. But I have a 5 here. But then again, if I add 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay. I could just as well say 7 doubled is 14. 4 plus 1 is going to be 5 too, so it doesn't matter how I do it. Okay, let's stick with 32 though. 32 doubled is going to be 64. Bring me back up here. So here I have a 1. But 6 plus 4 equals 10, and 1 plus 0 comes back to 1. Okay. 64 doubled is 128. 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. And 1 plus 1 is 2. 128 doubled is 256, which reduces back to 4. 256 doubled is 512, reducing back to 8. 512 doubled is 1024, which reduces back to 7. 1024 doubled is 2048, which reduces back to 5. No matter how many times I go around, no matter what numbers I take, and no matter what combination I do. In other words, I could, ha I could say this is 11, where my 2 is here, because 1 plus 1 is 2. 11 doubled is 22, and 2 plus 2 is 4. There's no possible way to break this doubling sequence. Why is that significant? Okay. Because Doubling is how vibration and motion occurs. And this energy, which is going to be represented by our number nine, this uh, tachyon, monopole, uh, what we're going to call etherons, this energy is the source of all motion, of all vibration, of all time, of heat. It's the source of life. It's what keeps everything moving forward. 